Well, welcome back, Pet Parent. I'm so happy you're here. And today we're talking about Super Zoo. So I'm going to be giving you a recap of Super Zoo. And if you don't know what that is, uh, it's actually a convention for pet professionals. So it's not open to the public, uh, but there's all kinds of pet professionals there from groomers, uh, store owners, companies big and small, lots of new product, lots of emerging brands, uh, and, and education. So it's, it's really robust. And even if you're a consumer and you're not in the pet world, like that's not where you make your living. There's a lot of stuff I want to share with you on today's episode. Uh, just giving you a recap of everything that went down that happened that I saw. It's huge. It's humongous. So I know I didn't see everything, but I have a lot of really great stuff that I want to talk to you about. So let's get to it. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, so this was my first year at Super Zoo, and boy, oh boy, did it not disappoint. So it started out before the show floor opens, and I'm, I'm going to describe the show floor to you a little bit more in detail in just a minute. Um, I do also want you to know that at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you my top five picks for things to look out for, things I'm going to be doing more research on, I'm going to be looking for uh, in the coming months, hopefully, that my independent pet store uh, can get access to, if not that I can, as a consumer, get access to. Um, but it started out with two days of education, and there were lots of wonderful, wonderful uh, education panels, um, some that I wasn't terribly interested in, of course, you know, as everything goes, right? There's, it's not everything is for everyone, but there were some really great uh, panels, especially Dr. Ryan Yamka was on one of the panels. I took quite a few snippets of video. And then I'm hoping to release to y'all in some form or fashion. I'm sure I will be posting them on Patreon first and foremost, <laughs> because that's kind of where I do my brain dump a lot of times is I have all of this information. I'm going to get it to you as a Patreon supporter, and then I'm going to figure out how to slowly but surely in some form or fashion purpose this content somehow uh, to, to get it out to others. So the layout there, first of all, there was a whole section of Super Zoo that I did not partake in. And it's actually a really big part of Super Zoo. It's just not my part. <laughs> and that is the grooming. So there are lots of education tracks for groomers. There are grooming contests for multiple days throughout Super Zoo. So it was really cool to see lots of dogs walking around and many dogs that were, they came in ungroomed and then they got groomed, but then there was like a lot of really creative grooming going on. And it, it was, it was really interesting to see some of the dogs walking around. So that was part of Super Zoo and not a part that I'm going to be going over in any detail in today's episode because it wasn't, I'm not a groomer uh, and, and it wasn't a part of Super Zoo that I participated in outside of the fact that I did see a lot of dogs walking around, which was pretty cool. Um, but the layout outside of grooming, there was a, it was actually a pretty darn big section of healthy pet products, which I was really, really excited about. So if you look at the map of the overall floor plan of uh, the, the Super Zoo floor show, and just to kind of give you an idea of what is on the floor. Companies uh, rent booths in Super Zoo to display their products, to have a place for 
mostly retailers to come to talk to them, to experience the product, to experience the company itself, to learn about um, new products coming out, the mission of the company, uh, to, to find a lot of retailers will, especially, well, I'm sure all of the, the big ones were there. I, I saw quite a few of the, the big retail brands there, but also smaller, independent, and everything in, in between. So you get to meet the people behind the brand. Sometimes it's the owner or sometimes it's it's people that work for the company, depending on how big the company is. But you get to experience the brand. You get to experience the products. They Some of the products, depending on what it is, they'll actually give you uh, demonstrations of the product and provide you with the benefit of bringing this product to your customer base, why you should have their products in your store. So um, since I don't have a store, I don't, I don't even have an online store. What I do have uh, on my website are a handful of brands that I know and trust and use myself that I have affiliate links for. So uh, what an affiliate link is, is, you click my link and I think a lot of people are, are familiar with this now, but you use my link, you go to the store, you pay the same price you would as if you were going to buy this on your own. But because I referred you, I get a teeny tiny little percentage of that sale. And usually it's, it's so small that <laughs> um, it takes a lot of sales to accumulate anything, but that's not really the point. The point is that I have a way to, say, I really love this product. I really love this company. I use it myself and I want you to experience it as well. And, you know, if you use my link, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Uh, so I do have a handful of those links on my website. Again, there are there. I do not put anything on my website that isn't a product or a brand that I personally use and know and trust. And I got to connect with a couple of brands that I'm already doing that with, that I've already been using their products. And I got to connect with new brands that I'm going to be adding to my website in the same capacity. So I, back to the layout, it's about three football fields, <laughs> the entire show floor, which is why I said I didn't get to all of it. I got to a lot of it, but not to all of it. I, I started with the new products. So they have a the, they have a whole section of new products, products that have either just recently in the last couple of months come to market or they are going to be coming to market in the next couple of months. So I got to see a lot of new products and there are some trends that I'm seeing that we're going to talk about here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but I went through all I I say that. I went through the majority of the new products. I went through all of the dog and the cat. I didn't go through any of the like small animal, lizard, snake, that kind of thing. That's just not part of what I do. But I went through all of the dog and the cat. I looked at all of the new products coming out. And I did see some trends that I definitely want to talk to you about. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Now, there's a huge show floor where any and everybody that is anybody can have booth space. Um, you're going to see your hills. You're going to see your Yukonuba, your Royal Canaan. You're going to see uh, Mars Pet Care. You're going to see a bunch of distributors um, who are trying to sign up new uh, online and um, brick and mortar stores to, uh, you know, buy products from them. Um, you're going to see, I mean, there were tons and tons and tons of uh, products there. And in this main space, there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't terribly interested in, uh, so I didn't. There was there were some good stuff in there too. I'm not saying that there wasn't, but I didn't focus my time on that because these were brands that have most for the most part, not always, but 
brands that have been around for a long time, brands that I have experience with, brands that I probably don't want <laughs> any additional experience with. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's just the way things go in any market, right? Not just the pet market. So from there, in, in the kind of the back section of the show floor was emerging brands. So I did make a point to go through all of the emerging brands. And I did have a couple that were really incredibly interesting. Uh, I did take some video. I'm, I'm hoping to put a full form YouTube video up soon. Uh, my husband is helping me with that editing because he did a lot of the recording for me. So he actually has all of the video footage. Um, so a lot of really wonderful emerging brands. In addition to that, there was an entire, I mean, it was probably at least a quarter of the entire show floor, which I said, which I told you was roughly three uh, f football fields, roughly a quarter of that, maybe a little bit more was healthy pet stuff. Now I will say <laughs> that there were some things, there were some products, there were some companies in the healthy pet section that I personally would not have put there. However, for the most part, that's not the case. For the most part, there really were some really incredible brands that a lot of them I had not heard of. And I'm really excited to hear more from. What was really interesting to me was there were a handful of companies, a handful of brands that don't yet have distributorship in the United States, meaning they aren't uh, they don't have their product in a warehouse, a distributor warehouse that can then send product out to all of the pet stores in the United States. And there are regions in the United States. So even if you get uh, a distributorship in one region, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have distributorships in all regions of the United States. But there were a handful of brands that were looking to get distributorship in the United States so they could bring uh, their product to a larger market in the United States. I was really impressed with a couple of these brands uh, and did take some video footage, which again is going to be in the long form, the YouTube video, the more long form content, um, not necessarily a reel, which I did do some reels while I was there. So if you're not following me on Instagram and TikTok, I highly recommend you do so because I still have some to put up. But, um, yeah, so that's basically the layout. And then there was a whole grooming section. So grooming products and tools, which I didn't go through. Um, that just wasn't, wasn't my thing. So that said, it was a lot of walking. Um, I got to meet some really great people, which I'm, I'm so, so thrilled to have met some of the incredible people in the pet industry that I knew online and finally met in person, but then there were others that I met for the first time and, and had ne have never even formed a relationship with online prior to this and now do. So that was really wonderful as well. And it's going to definitely bring about some new opportunities for content interviews um, later on. So I'm going to be scheduling quite a bit of that, which is really exciting for the podcast specifically. Um, so I hope if you're not already following the podcast, maybe you're just listening to this episode, you're go ahead and give it a follow because there are a lot of great interviews coming up. Um, so let's talk about some of the new products that I saw in the like new emerging brands. I'm looking over here at some of my note cards, Catalyst, Cat Litter is one of them. And uh, it's made from wood. Yes, it's made from wood. So it says it has four times the performance of clay litter. Catalyst has two times the absorption and half the density of clay litter, which if you've been following me, you probably know that I'm not a fan of clay litter to begin with. It's not very healthy for our pets. Uh, and this says our patented production process of upcycling soft pine wood to create our litter results in superior absorption. Therefore, you can use less of catalyst to do the same job as clay litter, super odor absorption, exceptional clumping power, biodegradable. I'm definitely going, going to be trying this product and I will do um, some sort of review probably in a 
a real style video. So again, follow me, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Um, but this is an up and coming brand that I'm very, very interested in. Um, also Raised Right is another brand that is is something I'm very interested in. I did already post a reel on this company. They work with Dr. Karen Becker in their meal, meal formulations. They are doing the best they can to do all whole food formulations. Um, next to impossible for cat food, but for dog food, totally possible and they're doing it. So very excited about that brand. And the one other product, well, actually, let me let me tell you a little bit more about this product in my top five picks. There's another one that I want to tell you about from the new products that um, I, I am including, again, in my top five at the end of this podcast. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. But the, the new products were, were really interesting. And here are some of the trends I was seeing. I'm seeing a lot of the word vet and veterinarian used on foods. And while in some cases um, that may be a really good thing, in other cases and in the majority of cases that I saw, it's just used for marketing because here's, here's the reality. And I actually, I wish I had gotten this on video. I didn't. There was a, a veterinarian who was moderating a panel talk, the, the, the panel talk I was telling you about earlier that Dr. Ryan Yamka was in. And he spoke up and he said, here's the reality of veterinarians and nutrition. They get, we get, he said, because he's a veterinarian, one course, one semester on nutrition. It is in the first year um, there is very little said about fresh food. There's there's very little uh, education on nutrition to begin with. And depending on what uh, university you are getting your veterinary degree at, uh, your veterinary medicine degree at, you, whichever, it's either going to be Hills or Royal Canaan probably, that is sponsoring that veterinary program at that university, they are the ones in control of the nutrition course. So basically all of the nutrition uh, education a veterinarian gets is it needs to be balanced to AFCO standards, at least because, you know, dogs and cats and other animals are going to suffer and probably die horrible <laughs> deaths if they are not getting balanced nutrition over their lifetime. And that kibble is the way to go because this is balanced. This is easy. You can put it on your shelf and sell it in your office. Um, it's easy for consumers. This is our product. It's the best product. Go ahead and sell that. In a nutshell, that's what he said. And gosh, I wish I had gotten it on video, but I didn't know he was going to say it because he wasn't on the panel. <laughs> he was the moderator. Um, so I didn't, I didn't pull my camera up quick enough to, to get him talking about that. Anyway, so that is a trend that I'm seeing. There's a lot of vet diet, um, veterinary formulated, a lot of combinations using the word vet or veterinary to elicit a response from the consumer that, oh, this is safe. Veterinarian is behind it. And I know that they have the best interest for my pet. And here's the thing. They do. They're just taught poorly. Um, about nutrition. So I'm not saying that they don't have the best. They absolutely, I, I, veterinarians don't get into veterinary medicine for the money because <laughs> that's just, let's be real. They are overworked and underpaid. They get into it because they have a passion for pets. So I, I, I want to make sure that we have that clear. However, unless they are taking strides and taking it upon themselves to continue to educate themselves and find good education out there on nutrition, what they get from veterinary school is not sufficient. It's not good enough. So that's one trend that I'm seeing. And the, a lot of trends are just really in marketing. The using the word vet or veterinary to make you feel comfortable that it's a, it's a good product. Also, Lots of companies are using um, variations of raw on their kibble packaging. Uh, I saw Rawble, R-A-W-I, 
BBLE, maybe, I don't know, maybe the I wasn't in there, but Robble, there were, there were various iterations of them using the words raw and kibble together. This is not possible. Um, it, it's 100% marketing. There's nothing raw about it. You're not getting superior nutrition. It's still a dry it's, it's, it's a high heat process extruded product. That's what kibble is. High heat process extr extruded. If it's high heat process and extruded, you can't add the word raw to it and make it any, you're just, it's, it's all marketing. Um, I even saw a bag of kibble that said holistic on it. That's an oxymoron. It can't be holistic and dry. A dry food diet is biologically inappropriate for a dog and a cat. Hands down, 100%. Mammals need a good amount of moisture in their diet. They've got to get it somewhere. As a matter of fact, I need a drink of water. One second. <laughs> I'm a mammal. I need water. Um, and a lot of my food does not contain water. I have to supplement with a lot of water, and our dogs and cats are not prone to doing that. So those are some of the trends, the negative trends I'm seeing. The positive trends that I'm seeing, and this was fewer is I did see more raw and freeze-dried raw brands up and coming, um, some of which I'm going to talk about in my top five picks, so I don't want to go too much into detail on that right now. So I'm not giving you, I'm not reiterating the same thing over and over. Okay, there was one thing that I was, it, it blew my mind. I was completely not expecting it. And no, it's not insects. I was actually expecting insects. There were talks. Um, there was one education panel about insects as a protein source in pet food because that is something that is coming. Uh, I did see, I'm trying to remember, I don't think I saw anything available to consumer. There wasn't anything that I recall in the new um, or emerging section that was insect based. However, I did see one company that was there that was looking for pet food brands to buy their insect protein. So they were actually creating or I, I guess growing, raising, farming <laughs> insects to, specifically for pet food. So they were there looking for um, I guess, existing pet food brands to partner with so they could sell their insects to them to use in their pet food formulations. So that wasn't, that, that's, that's a step behind consumer availability, right? So it's coming. I think next year we'll see more of that. Um, but my number one unexpected thing was I did, and I did a reel on this, I saw a shark cartilage treat. And it was actually like, it looked like part of a spinal column. Um, I was very concerned when I first saw that. The, the brand is WAG, W-A-G. Everything they bring in is out of Australia. So I'm assuming they're an Australian company. I haven't, I, I literally got back two days ago and I'm recording this episode. So I haven't had a chance to do a whole lot of research into um, new brands that I, they had a very small booth. They, everything I saw on all of the packaging, it was um, small batch, single ingredient, uh, and everything was out of Australia. And it said eth ethically sourced. Everything said ethically sourced. So what I, I did ask about the shark cartilage because I was very concerned and I was like, how ethical is this really? And what he told me was that it is a dogfish shark. And that particular shark is an invasive species in the Australian water. So they are actually culling the invasive species to bring the ecosystem back to where it should be. And in, and this was a product that came out of, you know, pulling this invasive species out of the water. So if that is true, and it seemed to be, he, I didn't have any reason not to believe him when he said that, um, then okay, I don't know 
how a dog would, would respond to it. I didn't get a sample of it, but that is interesting and very unexpected. So I did want to tell you about that. Uh, everything that I just told you about, I want to make a point here to say this right here is exactly why it is so important to shop at small independent retailers. All of the information, all of the research that I'm doing, even though I'm not an, ind as an independent retailer, I am, I know, I am an anomaly as a pet parent. Most pet parents don't know to do all of this research. Most pet parents don't have the time to do all of this research. I know that I am, you know, part of probably the one or two percent of pet parents that are out there doing this research on our own. But these small independent retailers, especially the ones with healthy pet food shops, are out there doing this research, bringing only the best products they can find for different categories that they need to have represented in their stores. So when you go into a big box store, you're not going to get the level of knowledge or expertise that you are going to get when you shop at a small independent retailer. And this right here, my experience at SuperZoo, is exactly why. And that's really why I wanted to bring this information to you, not to say, hey, look, I had such a great time at SuperZoo, which I did, but to show you that it's a lot of work. It's, it's money. I had to, I had to take time away from my home. I had to pay a pet sitter. I had to, you know, fly, pay for a, a ticket on a plane. I had to get a hotel room. I paid for the education, yada, yada, yada. I had to, and, and I, not, and I'm not saying this to say, oh, look what I did. No, I'm saying this because this is what these small independent, uh, pet stores, these, owners are doing because they care so much and they want to be able to provide you not only the best products, but the best information to help you in whatever situation you have with your pet. So if you're shopping, even if you're already shopping at a small independent pet store, if you're not taking advantage of talking to the people in that shop and, and providing them with the information about you and your pets and allowing them to give you their knowledge and say, Hey, you know, this over here might work a little bit better for you, and here is why. That is so powerful and just such a reason to shop. It's, not only are you supporting your local community by doing that, which is really, really important. I think, I hope that in we're in 2022, we're starting to see that while there's a lot of wonders in technology and the convenience of technology and the convenience of these big box stores and online shopping like Amazon. Um, there's a lot of downside in that too. And I'm hoping more and more people are starting to see the importance of community and the importance of bringing your money back into your community to support your community and really revive and lift your own community up. And by supporting small business uh, and, and, you know, these small independent pet sales, pet shop retailers really do a lot of work to get all of this information and to stay on top of what's going on in the pet food industry and bring you the best products because of it. So, that's my little rant about shopping small. And before I end today's episode, here is my promised top five picks to look at. Um, in the coming months, I'm definitely going to be doing some more research into these. The number one on this list, and this is in no particular order. We're just going to do five of them. Number one is a product called Checkup. Now, I did a reel on this, and I, I hope you go back and watch it on my Instagram this is a product. There's one for dogs. There's one for cats. So I'll talk to you briefly about the one for dogs. And then I'm going to talk to you about the one for cats because I think the one for cats is, is really, really like, wow, I need this in my toolkit. And not to say that the one for dogs isn't, but you'll understand in just a minute. So the one for dogs is basically 
they're testing, the test strips are the same, but the one for dogs provides you with this telescopic handle and at the end of the handle is an open metal ring. And the, the ring size, it comes with a um, disposable cup that you put in the ring so it just holds around, you know, the top rim of that cup. And the telescopic handle allows you to catch your dog's urine as they're peeing without having your hand in the way and getting, you know, urine on your hand or spooking your dog because you're so close to them when they're trying to pee, um, all of the things. So it gives you this cup with this telescopic handle to catch your dog's urine as they're peeing. And then what happens is once you have the urine, two things. One, there is a test strip that you can use to identify um, kidney levels, any like if, if there are kidney issues going on, if there are urinary issues going on. So it's testing the pH. It's testing the a blood glucose. So if you have a diabetic animal, that's really cool. And then it's also testing to see if there is blood in the urine. Now with these four things, if you think there's something going on with your pet, I think this is going to work best for animals that have chronic conditions. But if you think there might be something going on with your pet and you're just not sure if you need to get the, to the veterinarian, um, you can do this simple at-home urine test to find out if there are any red flags for any of these four markers. And if there is, then you know for sure, okay, I need to go to the veterinarian. Now with that, because you just captured your dog or cat's urine, um, it also comes with a vial. So you can pour some of the urine into the vial. Now you've got a sample to take into your vet. That's one less thing that your vet has to do. With the cat, it's the same thing, but instead of the cup with the telescopic handle, which we all know is not going to work, um, <laughs> it comes with this really cool sand-based litter that will not absorb the liquid. So it is non-absorbent. So the, the urine will pool on top and it will not mix at all with the litter, but it feels very much like the litter that you use normally in your litter box so your cat isn't put off by it. We all know how finicky and picky our cats are, are with what they step on and the feel of their paws, um, which is one of the reasons why it can be difficult to transition to a different type of litter because it feels different to them and they may not like it. But this litter was very soft, felt very much like sand. I felt it myself. And it was really, really cool because you can kind of play around with it. With you know, We did it with water. So, you know, we were using water and kind of playing around with it and it has this little pipette where you can draw up the liquid from that's sitting on top of this specially designed litter. Um, now this is not a litter that you would use every single day, but when you need, when you need it, it's there and use again, the test strip, uh, kidney, urinary, blood in the urine and blood glucose. So uh, again, especially if you have a cat with a chronic uh, illness or something that you know, you, you're constantly concerned. Is this, is, are they in normal range or are they not? Um, this, this was really, really cool. So I think this is definitely something, especially for my cats that I want to have in my toolbox. Um, so I'm definitely going to be looking more into checkup and I think you should put it on your list too. So number two is raised right. Now I have the little pamphlet here if you're watching the video, but what's really cool, I talked a little bit about raised right just a moment ago. Again, the formulations are, um, they work with Dr. Karen Becker for the formulations in both the dog and the cat foods. It's a home cooked style food. So it's not, um, it, it's not a, a raw food. It's a, it looks lightly cooked. But again, with the dog food, they are using 100% whole foods to balance the uh, nutrition. With the cats, they are using as much whole food as possible, but it's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible for a cat formulation to be completely 100% balanced with whole foods. They have to add in a little bit of vitamins to it, but they're doing their best and using as much as possible. It does come frozen. And um, they also have treats, single ingredient treats, which are uh, air dried, I believe. I don't think they're freeze dried. I think they're air dried. I would have to double check that. And then they have these shakes and flakes. Again, dog and cat friendly. 
So really, really, I'm, I'm very excited to continue to learn more about the Raised Right brand. Everything is made in the USA. It is a home cooked style. So if you are um, not thrilled or you just haven't quite grasped that you're, you're just not there, you're not ready for freeze dry, or I'm sorry, if you're, you're not ready for raw, completely raw, then this is going to be an excellent, excellent option for you. And again, using whole form, uh, whole foods to formulate to at, at least AFCO minimums. Um, but with Dr. Karen Becker involved, I bet it's better nutrition than that. <laughs> I would bet. So definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. Now, another brand, and I don't think I have, I know I didn't get a sample of, um, of this one, but I was very excited about is side by side. So side by side is they have, uh, wet foods that are like a stew type foods, and then they're doing freeze dried raw. Um, I believe they also have treats and they also have human grade probiotics. This, this company is 100% dog, so they don't currently have anything for cats, but what makes them different is that they are taking the guesswork out of uh, warming, cooling, and neutral foods for your dog. So if this is something you haven't heard of, this is a concept in uh, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. And if you've ever heard of Dr. Judy Morgan, she is a big proponent of um, Chinese tra traditional Chinese veterinary medicine and um, using foods not just seasonally, but also to help treat uh, uh, different ailments in pets. So some some dogs run hot, some dogs run cold, some dogs are neutral. The the ideal is for dogs to be in that neutral category. And if we can keep them in that neutral category, great. Um, and then there are illnesses that we can characterize and use different foods, whether that be warming foods or cooling foods. And no, I'm not talking about the temperature of the food. Um, to help combat whatever is going on in the body. So side by side is taking the guesswork out of this and they are formulating cooling meals, warming meals and neutral meals to help you. So like duck, if I remember correctly, is a cooling food and they have a duck formula. So everything in that formula, it's not 100% because if you, if you, how do I want to, say this. If you study traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, it's very much all about yin and yang, right? And you've got 50%. If you think about the um, yin and yang sign, you've got the black and the white, and you're looking at like 50%, 50% uh, balance in yin and yang. Well, with a cooling diet, you're going to have a little bit more cooling with a, with a small amount of neutral or warming foods. And with a warming diet, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to have more warming foods with a small, you're never trying to get it to a hundred percent of something. That's not balance. Balance is neutral. So 50, 50, we're trying to use cooling foods or warming foods to help our dog get back to neutral. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure Dr. Judy can explain it better, but side by side is basically taking the guesswork out of formulating and sourcing the foods for your dog. So you can, if you know your dog needs a cooling diet, you can buy their cooling formula until your dog gets back to normal and then get them back on a uh, neutral limit, get them back on a neutral food once they are there. So really, really interesting. Um, I hope that wasn't, I, I know I kind of took the 10,000 foot view of that, but <laughs> um, real, I, I just, that was really interesting to me to see a company um, just that is their selling point. That is so cool that, that they're thinking about that. So really, really interesting to me. Um, the fourth one on my list is Westpaw. Now you guys, you, you, my ride or die guys that have, you, you know, you've been here with me for the past, what, eight years since I started my little online store, Curious Kitty, which I no longer have, but, uh, well, I have the URL, but I don't have the online store anymore. It just wasn't uh, aligned with what I wanted to do any longer. But my number one, hands down, favorite beds, <laughs> um, pet beds for dogs and cats, they used to have a line of cat products, which was just amazing. I, I wish they 
still had them, but they don't. They're a hundred percent a dog company now. Um, they have toys. I can't, they, they are wonderful. They are 100% made in the USA in Bozeman, Montana. They're very passionate about keeping everything in Montana. They are um, eco-friendly. They're, they're just wonderful. They have a huge line of dog toys. They have beds, blankets. Let me tell you, these are some high quality, but definitely not the highest price point. They're not the lowest price point either. That's for sure. But they're definitely not the highest price point either and really really high quality i still have beds i have beds from i have never thrown away a west paw bed i still have beds that are eight years old that still look like they're in almost new condition i mean yes i do take very good care of them and i use you know uh, sheets and blankets to help protect them for multiple reasons but I love Westpaw and I really want, I have not really focused on their products for many years. And I want to bring that back because I need to, this is part of my job is to bring you the best parts of the pet industry so that you know what to look for. And I I need to do better with that. Um, And going to the Westpaw booth reminded me of that. So you guys, I'm going to be talking about Westpaw more. I have tons of beds and toys that I can feature. Um, They gave me some swag, which is awesome. So the fifth one on my list is another product. It's not food. It's not treats. Um, It's Wolfgang Man and Beast. Now, again, I just told you I have not been really great with bringing products outside of food and treats to you lately. And I'm going to get better about that. I'm going to round things off a little bit more uh, because it's important. Like we buy things for our dog that aren't food and treats. And I want to make sure that I'm telling you about the best products I have found. I really love the Wolfgang. They have um, collars, harnesses, and leashes. That's what they do. And they do it really, really well. And they have the most beautiful designs. They also do not use nylon. It's a, a poly, some, some sort of poly blend. So it is uh, water wicking, I think they called it. So it, it, it is superior to nylon because it doesn't fray like nylon does. It doesn't get dirty like nylon does, and it doesn't hold water, so it's not going to get all musty and gross like the nylon collars, leashes, and harnesses do. So, plus, again, they have some amazingly beautiful designs. Um, I did bring a leash and a collar home for Kim, so we are going to be doing some reels on that and TikToks to show you how absolutely beautiful it is. Again, if you know me, you know that I don't love attaching leashes to collars. Collars for me are to hold ID tags and for, you know, just decoration, just to to have some spice to, it's like an outfit for your dog without putting an outfit on your dog. So having lots and lots of different collars, I think is great. You're just showing, it's, it's a way for people to express their personality with their dog. Um, so the designs that Wolfgang Man and Beast has, so I, I talked to one of the co-owners at the show. He actually was a designer for Skull Candy uh, before he co-founded this company. And so his background is in design and that shows in the beautiful designs on their products. So that's my top five, though there are lots more from the show that I am going to be talking to you about. And I'm gonna be doing reels on a lot of products that we got from the show, both cat and dog. So definitely make sure you're following me on Instagram. Um, I just changed the website for the Pet Parenting Reset. So if you haven't been there in a minute, go back, check it out, go to the petparentingreset.com com check out the new design site give me some feedback let me know what you think i think it is much easier for you to find the shows you are looking for um, find information about the guests that are on the show you're gonna have to let me know though what you think about 
the redesign site. It is live now. So go check it out. With that, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me and learning all about SuperZoo. I am so excited to go next year. I already have the dates blocked out in my calendar, and I'm really excited to continue to show you. I, I, I feel like I didn't even, now that I, like I wrote down my top five, I brought them to you. I'm kind of glancing over at my desk. I have, I, I don't even have half of what I brought back um, laid out on my desk, and I'm already looking over like, man, I wish I had talked to them about that. So Make sure you're following me on Instagram, at least TikTok as well, if you happen to be there. Because I'm going to be doing a ton of short form content in Reels and TikToks with the products that I did get to bring back from SuperZoom. I'm so excited about it. With that, please give your pets some extra love from me today. Until next time, bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.